Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where it is time for me to give my full review of this newer knife right here from Kaiser. This here is the Kaiser Mini Roach. Now, before I go any further into this review, I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in today. If you like what you see, please do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button, follow along, and I will continue to bring you the content. Now, let's take a look at some overall specs on this knife right here. We have an overall length of 7.125 inches, a blade length coming in at 3 inches, and a blade width of 1.375 inches. We have a blade thickness of 125 thousandths, a blade material of 154 cm steel, and a drop point style blade. We have a hollow grind, and this is not just any hollow grind, this is a hollow grind of epic, epic proportions, especially for a budget knife. We're gonna talk a lot more about this grind in just a second. We have a handle length coming in at 4.125 inches and a handle thickness coming in right at 500 thousandths or half an inch. We have a handle width of one inch with a handle material of G10, a liner lock locking mechanism, a user of a right or, or no, it is just right hand tip up carry and a weight of 3.9 ounces. This is designed by Matt Degnan and a price of $75. 75 bucks is good to go on this for me. It, to be, you guys, to be totally honest, I'm moving forward, anything made by Kaiser for 75 bucks or less with their, you know, tr their regular, you know, budget based 154 cm steel and the quality that comes with the kaiser i've never had an issue with the kaiser at 75 bucks or less i at least not to my recollection um they're just good to go they're great knives the the action is fantastic um the quality and construction is good to go so you really can't ask for anything much more than in a knife that's 75 dollars. so i don't think i'll ever have an issue with a kaiser budget knife of that nature Let's take a look at some size comparisons here. Um, you know what? Before we get into size comparisons, I should probably let you know that you can pick up this guy at Mojave Outdoor. Um, use this code right here. 10% off will save you 10% on any knife from Mojave Outdoor. And we're going to stick it right up there today. Um, but Mojave Outdoor is your Kaiser exclusive retailer. Be sure to check them out for all of your Kaiser knife needs. Now, well, let's put it back on the table and let's get to those size comparisons. Not, not uh, definitely the little brother of the Roach. Uh, the Roach was a very big knife, kind of had those that Microtech stitch feel. Um, this is a much different little beast. Um, still a beast, but yes, little, as you can see, next to the Kaiser Altus, even shorter than the Altus. The Civivi Brazen. So, of course, it is obviously going to be much shorter than the Civivi Brazen. But you have a lot of little... It, it, it's still a bit chunky for a knife this small. It, uh, you know, obviously doesn't have a whole lot of length. But in terms of just being a good shape to get a nice solid grip on, uh, Kaiser really has something here. Let's take a look at some other Kaisers. This here is the Kaiser T1. And here we have the Kaiser Gemini. So, as you can see, definitely shorter than both of those two. Um, but just a very different knife in general. Uh, the Roach is one of those designs, and I said this about the original Roach, not necessarily this one, but just the, the profile of this knife. When I first saw it um, back on the original Roach, I wasn't too thrilled about it. I probably would have never bought it if Mojave wouldn't have sent me one for a review. And I've got to say, when I got it in hand, the looks got better just by the simple, amazing ergos it has. And this definitely reminds me of that original Roach, only better. I've, I've got to be completely honest here. I, I definitely find this model to be significantly better than the original Roach. Um, and for a lot of reasons, too. The size is just, just one. Uh, let's start here with the blade, and we'll touch on just why. Um, we have a very attractive and ridiculously, I mean ridiculously slicey drop point blade with an edge reading coming in at 13 thousandths at the edge. Now, that's just the edge here. I, it's really hard to get any type of a good look at this, but if you could just see how ridiculously, let's see here, uh, you can't. This is probably the best angle. If you look right here and see that edge, 
and just see how thin that is all the way down to the actual edge itself. We're talking 13 thousandths on this edge and even a third of the way up the blade, I mean about like right here, we're still talking 22 thousandths behind, or 22 thousandths of thickness. Obviously it's not necessarily right behind an edge, but 22 thousandths in thickness, which I mean, hell, there's a lot of knives that are 22 thousandths right behind the edge. So this is extremely impressive. Um, you know, you can sharpen this thing for the rest of your life and you're still going to have a ridiculously thin edge or at least a, a very good edge. Let's say you have this for, I mean, I don't know, there's never going to be anyone that is going to sharpen this thing all a third of the blade off. So you're basically going to have a razor's edge for the entire lifespan of this knife as long as you know how to sharpen a knife. Um, so a very, very, very nice hollow grind. I, I, I said this before and I'm going to say it again because it really does... Um, it, it does remind me of a Koenig Arias grind, just in terms of thinness and quality. Um, it's really, really good. It's actually kind of mind-boggling for a $75 budget knife to have this good of a grind. So I really can't emphasize just how amazing this grind is. It's definitely one worth experiencing. Uh, the tip on this guy, as you, could, as you saw earlier, um, look, just look at that at how thin that is. This is a scalpel of a tip. Um, just excellent for any slicing tasks. Um, I really like the swedge up here. With the width of this blade, the swedge kind of helps tie the, the width together with just the lines and slenderness of the hollow grind and the way everything comes together. Um, kind of a little angling, dipping down line into the tip. It just looks really good. It, it, it is a very attractive blade that uh, looks pretty different when you pair it with the handle, but it does make in my patient, in, in my patience, and I, I'm not very patient today because I've had two big cups of coffee. But in my opinion, uh, it's a very nice match. The handle with the blade, it does look very good. Um, this blade cut out here is another thing about this blade that just really does it for me. The original cut, the original Roach did not have a blade cut out. This one does. It's chamfered very well. It's extremely comfortable. You don't get any shaving of your nail when you're middle finger flicking. Um, and it is definitely my preferred form of deployment for this blade. Um, now, this doesn't have any jimping on the spine, but I'm okay with that because this handle in, in two different positions, which we'll talk about here in a second, is so gripping, has such a good traction on your hand. I don't really need jimping up here. Um, and I really don't think Jimmy would make a big difference at all for this model because of how well it wraps and just falls into your hand and locks in. So no real issue there. Now, this removable flipper tab, as you guys can see, this is removable. Um, you have to disassemble the knife to take the flipper tab off. Now, some people had an issue with that. I don't have any issue with this whatsoever for this kind of, this is my thought process with removing a flipper tab. You're only going to do it once probably because you're going to, you're going to get the knife, you're going to flip it, you're going to flick it, and you're going to decide, do I want the flipper tab or don't I? And then the one time you take it off, you'll probably never put it back on. You know, maybe if you sell it or gave it to somebody else, they would want it. But outside of that, it's a one-time decision. So that's not a big deal at all. Um... While I do really, really appreciate the concept in Kaiser taking the time to make a re removable flipper and giving everyone that option, you know, it works great. It really does work great in terms of just the overall concept and what it does. Um, but I also love multiple deployment options. I, I really do. You guys know that. I think a lot of other people do too. So where I'm coming at from this while I do like the idea, what I wish they would, would have done is instead of making it removable, just making this a much lower profile. Because you guys already know, Kaiser's action is pretty fantastic. The detents are crisp on point. So you don't need a huge flipper tab to kick a blade like this out. You just need enough of a flipper tab to help you break that detent. So, I mean, you could really shave this down significantly. I mean, we're talking probably something like this. You know, get a lot of that off to where you can still just push it in, break the detent, and the blade will fly out like this. I, at least I think. I'm not 100% sure, but that would be my guess. What I'm going to try and do here um, when I disassemble this and take the flipper tab off for good, 
um, or at least for good as of right now, I'm going to try and mod this flipper tab. And I've, I've never done anything like this. I'm not the kind of guy that spends a lot of time in a tool shop or anything like that. So it's going to be very new for me. I could very well mess this up. But what I'd like to do is kind of what I wish Kaiser would have done to begin with, uh, grind this uh, flipper down a little to where it's much more lower profile to where it looks and this still in my opinion it looks okay it's just a, it's a big flipper tab and the rest of the knife has you know it, it kind of just really flows together pretty good and the flipper tab does kind of stick out there kind of like you know a, a dumbo ear flipper tab but I still don't necessarily hate the looks of it like this I just think it would look better with a lower profile flipper tab that still works. So I'm gonna try and do that. And I'll I'll update at some point down the road how well that went. I don't know how well it's gonna go, guys. I am uh, I am not a master tool man, so I'm not sure. Um, but I'm gonna try that out because I think that is kind of an, if, if I had a choice of what to do with this flipper tab, I would have liked to have seen this non-removable, but just with a much lower profile, a little, a little you know, closer design to the handle to where it's not sticking out so much. But as is, the removable option is a very good concept, something I do appreciate. The only real thing that I don't love about it is you can see the line in the handle, and you see that more than you think. I mean, that it's really visible when you're looking at the knife. Um, so I think it would look better if that line wasn't there. Um, but again, very nitpicky. Another reason I think it's going to look really good. Yeah, it's going to look fantastic without that flipper tab there. And the ergos are just going to get just a little better. I'm sure they will. Um, but we'll see. I'll also include this in a long-term review to let you know um, just exactly what I think of this long-term with the flipper tab off. But it, it will be coming off for me. Uh, going into the handle and ergos, uh, like I said before, the ergos are great. I don't really have, the only thing that can make this knife any better is if the scales were contoured. These are not contoured. They are flat scales, um, but they are still very, very good with extreme quality. We'll talk about more here in just a second, but in terms of ergos, it's good to go. You have two excellent grip options. This is how I'm probably always going to hold this knife. This is it for me. But if you ever did have to, like say you wanted to get all the blade, but not, uh, you know, have your finger so close to the blade for some reason, you can choke back. And this is really a very solid, powerful grip. Your thumb kind of pushes the blade forward. So when you go down, it's a real aggressive angle and your fingers fall right into the grip here. Still a very solid four finger grip. I really like this little rounded area down here because my pinky sits perfectly there and it feels so good. And I'm sure that's probably what Matt had in mind when he was designing that area there. Just a special little spot for just your pinky. I kind of sound like Bob Ross there. A nice special little spot for your pinky. But no, it's it just works. It really does work. At first look, the handle is probably the one part that may look a little bit wonky to, to some people. But I tell you what, it's anything but wonky. It's fantastic. It feels phenomenal. So big fan of that. Uh, we have no hot spots anywhere on this handle. Uh, the clip is executed to just about perfection. They even got rid of the roach on the clip. And, and, you know, I didn't really hate it on the original roach. You guys just know I like a clean, sterile clip. I'm really glad they did that. Totally recessed. Excellent, excellent job on this clip. The placement's very good in the middle. Um, big, big fan of how they brought it basically all the way to the end of the handle. And it just looks really good. That black and OD green uh, is always a good pairing for me. And another thing I really like about this is you have black and OD green and a stonewashed blade. I, I feel like a lot of times you get black and OD green on the handle, you're going to have a black blade. And that's okay. Um, but I really like this setup here. I just think it looks absolutely fantastic. Um, the milling on this handle is very well done. You get a lot closer in. You can see there's no frayed points. There's no, uh, or very, very little whiteness around the milling. So it doesn't look like it's cracked and dried up. Um, just a very nice, precise milling job. And it does really give you some texture, more so on the outside where the milling ends. You get a nice little bite, but there's plenty enough grip on this knife. There's no, uh, no additional desire for more grip, in my opinion. It's, it's good to go there in the grip department. I'm also really glad they used G10 and not the Rich Light material that they used on other knives. Uh, Rich Light, I, I thought it was okay, 
but it had a, a noticeable amount of flex in the handle and you don't have that i mean this is it's g10 this is this is actually extremely an extremely solid handle due to the width due to the curvature due to the stainless steel liners there is zero flex in these scales whatsoever um they are good to go in the durability department and i am just i really hope they continue to just keep going with g10 i i'm you know i i can do without rich light it was nothing special to me um g10 in my opinion is the way to go and i'm really happy to see it on this model um in terms of the liner lock you have a very effortless uh disengagement of the liner lock they as you can see they recessed enough of the front and scale back to where you can reach in there and they got that kind of the jimping there and very easily break that lock and shake it shut so in terms of handle construction it's really everything you guys already know and probably love about kaiser in this, I will say, this does feel, it may just be because it's G10 stainless steel as opposed to where I've handled a lot of my Carta handles lately, but this just feels extremely solid to me, and it, it makes me very happy to have a very solid knife. Plus, it has the, the backspacer. Backspacers always add a significant amount of durability to the handle, especially the bottom end, where they're, instead of just standoffs, you have a nice solid piece of a very precisely milled G10, so that'll always add some strength and durability to it as well. Uh, going into the action is, I mean, it's Kaiser. I, I, I don't know. I can say it's phenomenal and great and crisp and to the point and perfect. But I think you guys probably know that already. I think feel like it's expected with Kaiser, which is a good thing. As long as Kaiser can live up to the expectations, which they have so far. And to be honest, I don't have any concerns that they'll ever let me down. Um it's good. It's absolutely good to go. Um, for anyone concerned with the big flipper tab and middle finger flicking it, you can still easily middle finger flick this with the flipper tab on it all day. That's no issue at all. Don't ever worry about that happening because I'm even purposely getting close up to the flipper tab here and it's still zero issue. So you're good to go there if you if you like those multiple deployment options. Leave the flipper tab on because it does still look good. Um, and it works great. It really does work fantastically well. It's a good push button flipper, which you guys know I love a good push button. And that's what this is. So good to go there. But in my opinion, the middle finger flicking is really good. Um, one of the better middle finger flicking knives I've ever handled. It, I'm to the point to where it's really hard for me to say any of them are the best. There's a couple that would probably make the short list. And this actually would probably have, have a word about being on that short list. It may very well be on there because it is a very fidgety knife. I need to put a little more lube in this. I, I actually <laughs> I needed some out of the box. It was just a little dry. But even with those dry bearings, it, it still flips amazingly well and yeah i really uh no issue in the action department so uh, to be honest i I'm trying to think if i ever had a kaiser knife where i had issues with the action and I'm, I'm sure there probably has been one or two at some point but like most kaisers the action is good to go on this and moving into overall thoughts um for me this is an easy knife for the year contender in that 50 to 100 dollar price range and i gotta say in the year of the button locks with so many good button locks coming in in that 60 to 75 dollar price range that says a lot about this knife um i think it is fantastic it seems to be doing well um but it's great it is absolutely one i would 100 percent recommend um you guys will probably most likely see this in the knife of the year awards at the end of the year i tell you what if this does not make the top three um we've had one hell of a year in the knife industry because i'm really happy with this um i'm loving it and it's gonna get some considerable pocket time let me know what you guys think of this design of the mini roach have you handled the regular roach and are you now considering the mini roach if you're considering it it's green light go for me uh this is a very nice offering from kaiser and an excellent design from matt degnan i hope you guys enjoyed this one i hope you have a great rest of your day and until the next one i'm out